In this video, we're going to talk about related rates problems. And I have to say that I really enjoy this topic because you get to see some real practical examples, some real world problems that have to do with derivatives and calculus. And the problems don't seem overly contrived, like they would never happen in the real world. And also they're not problems that you could just solve using other methods like algebra. You really do need to use calculus to solve these problems. So I enjoy this section a lot and we're going to see quite a few examples. Now we're going to be emphasizing the fact that derivatives are really rates of change or instantaneous rates of change. Remember that we initially defined derivatives as having to do with the slope of a tangent line, but a derivative can also be thought of as a rate of change, an instantaneous rate of change. So what is a related rates problem? Well, I think the best way to understand it is just do some examples, which we're going to do. But broadly speaking, a related rates problem is just a problem that involves two or more rates or rates of change that are related to each other. So let's look at some examples. A 10 foot ladder is leaning against a wall. A person pulls the base of the ladder away from the wall at a constant rate of four feet per second. How fast is the top of the ladder sliding down the wall when the base is eight feet from the wall? So I've made a diagram of the situation here in Desmos. Here we have our ladder in red, and we're thinking of the x-axis down here as kind of being like the floor or the ground. And the y-axis here is the a wall that this ladder is leaning up against. And notice we can kind of pull the base of the ladder away from the wall or toward the wall. And notice what happens as we pull the base of the ladder away from the wall, the top of the ladder starts sliding down the wall. Even if the base is sliding at a constant rate to the right here, the top of the ladder is not sliding at a constant rate. The top of the ladder is starting out slowly, but then it's going to move faster and faster and faster, right? Even if the base of the ladder is moving at a constant rate. Because notice, if we move the ladder, let's say, from a distance of one foot away from the wall to two feet away from the wall, well, the top of the ladder hasn't moved very much, right? But if we move the base from eight feet to nine feet, the top of the ladder moves down the wall quite a bit. And from nine feet to 10 feet, it moves all the way down to the bottom, it moves a lot. So the question is, if the base of the ladder is moving away from the wall at a constant rate of four feet per second, right? It's getting pulled in this direction at a rate of four feet per second. How fast is the top of the ladder sliding down the wall when the base of the ladder is eight feet from the wall? So when this is eight right here, how fast is the top of the ladder sliding down the wall? So here's the problem again, and the question is, how can we solve a problem like this? What do we do? So here is a strategy for solving related rates problems. And we're pretty much gonna use this same strategy for basically all of these related rates problems. So the first step is to draw a picture or a diagram of the situation. The second step is we're gonna define variables as functions of time. So anything that's changing over time, we're gonna define it as a variable and we'll think of it as a function of time. The third step is we're gonna find an equation that relates those variables. So that equation might be an equation from geometry such as the Pythagorean theorem or the formula for the area of a circle or the volume of a sphere, some equation that relates the variables. Fourth, we're gonna take a derivative of both sides of that equation with respect to time. So derivative with respect to T. And the last step is we're gonna plug in the known quantities and we're gonna solve for the unknown quantity, the unknown thing that we're looking for. So I've gone ahead and drawn a diagram of the situation here. Our ladder is in red and we have our ground or the floor down here. We have the wall that the ladder is leaning up against. And notice the base of the ladder is moving away from the wall or being pulled away from the wall at a rate of four feet per second. And the question is, how fast is the top of the ladder sliding down the wall when the base of the ladder is eight feet away from the wall? Now, notice here that we have a triangle. And so our first thought might be that maybe we can use the Pythagorean theorem. In fact, that's exactly what we're going to use is the Pythagorean theorem. So we're going to call the distance from the wall to the base of the ladder, this distance here, we're going to call it A, but it's really A of T because this amount is changing, right? As the ladder is being pulled away from the wall, the base is being pulled away from the wall, A is actually getting bigger. And we're going to call this distance here B, the distance from the top of the ladder to the ground. And that distance is also changing, right? It's actually getting smaller over time. Now, this distance right here is not changing. So you might be tempted to put C, right? A squared plus B squared equals C squared. But this is not, we're not going to call it C because this amount is not changing. It's just 10. 
the, the length of the ladder is 10 feet. It's not increasing in length or decreasing in length. So we're not going to define it as a variable. But A and B, those are we're calling those variables and we're thinking of them as being functions of time. Now, what is an equation that relates our variables? Well, an equation would be the Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared is equal to C squared or 10 squared. Or in other words, A squared plus B squared is equal to 100. So notice so far what we've done, according to our strategy, we've drawn a picture of the situation. We've defined variables as functions of time, so we defined the A and the B. We found an equation that relates those variables, and we're now going to take a derivative of both sides of this equation with respect to time, with respect to t. So we're going to do d dt of the left-hand side, a squared plus b squared, equals d dt of the right-hand side. Now, the derivative of the right-hand side is pretty easy. The derivative of 100 is just 0. What's the derivative of the left-hand side? Well, again, we're thinking of a as being like a function of time, like an a of t. How do we take the derivative of something squared? Well, the derivative is going to be 2 times that something, 2a, times dA dt. Not dA dx. We're taking the derivative with respect to t, so this is dA dt. Now, what's the derivative of b squared? Well, it'll be 2 times b times db dt. So what's the last step? Well, according to our strategy, the last step is to plug in the known quantities and solve for the unknown quantity. So what is it that we know? Well, we know that A is increasing at a rate of 4 feet per second. So what we really know is that dA dt, which is the rate of change of A, is just 4. Okay, dA dt, the rate of change of A, is 4. It's increasing at a rate of 4 feet per second. Now, we also are interested in how fast is the top of the ladder sliding down the wall when the base is 8 feet from the wall. So we want to know when A is 8. So we're going to plug in 8 for A. Now, we didn't plug in 8 for A up here because A was really changing over time. So we're, we're not plugging it in until this last step here. Okay, so we know that A is 8. Now, what is B? Well, you can check for yourself. If A is 8, B is going to be 6, right? Because 8 squared plus 6 squared equals 10 squared. So use the Pythagorean theorem. You can see that B will be 6. My Bs actually look like 6s. So anyways, A is 8 and B is 6. What's the one thing left here that we haven't talked about? Well, what is DB dt? How fast is B changing? Well, that's exactly the thing that we're trying to find out is what is DB dt? Now, it should be negative because... The rate of change of b, b is actually decreasing, right? So db dt, the rate of change of b, we would expect to be negative. So let's go ahead and solve this. Let's plug these in. We have 2 times a, but a is 8, times dA dt, which is 4, plus 2 times b, but b is 6, times db dt, that's our unknown, equals 0. And now we can solve this. Well, 8 times 4 is 32, times 2 is 64. We have 64 plus 12 times db dt is equal to 0. Now, how do we solve this for db dt? Well, we'll subtract 64, and we're going to get 12 times db dt equals negative 64. And last of all, divide by 12. We get db dt equals negative 64 over 12, which actually reduces to negative 16 over 3, which is 5.3 repeating, or approximately forgot the negative, or approximately negative 5.33. Okay, now what does that mean, negative 5.33? What is that, negative 5.33 feet? Well, it's actually negative 5.33 feet per second. That's the rate of change of B at that instant that A is 8. That's how fast B is decreasing. So it's basically how fast the top of the ladder is sliding down the wall. It'd be sliding down the wall at a rate of 5.33 feet per second when A is 8. So notice, what did we do overall here? Well, we drew a diagram of the situation. We defined variables, anything that was changing. So this distance from the base of the ladder to the wall, that's changing, that's increasing, right? So we called it A, or A of T. The distance from the top of the ladder to the floor, that's also changing. It's actually decreasing over time, so we called it B. Now, this distance was not changing. This distance is just 10, so we didn't call it C. We're just calling it 10. And we found an equation that relates the variables, the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals 10 squared. So a squared plus b squared equals 100. Our next step was to take a derivative of that equation with respect to time. The derivative of 100, of course, is 0. The derivative of these, you have to use, well, it's really the chain rule that you're using. It's kind of like implicit differentiation. 
The derivative of a squared is 2a dA dt. The derivative of b squared is 2b dB dt. And then we plug in the things that we know. We know dA dt is 4. That's the rate of change of a, how fast a is increasing, dA dt. Again, the derivative is that rate of change of a with respect to time, and that's 4 or 4 feet per second. A was just 8, so that'd be 8 feet. B, and when A is 8, we found that B is 6. Use the Pythagorean theorem, 8 squared plus B squared equals 10 squared. B ends up being 6. And so we have these three knowns here that we can plug into our equation right there. And we still have our one unknown, which is dB dt, and that's exactly what we're looking for. How fast is B changing? How fast is the top of the ladder sliding down the wall? And we solve for that. So we plug these things in, we got that dB dt was negative 16 thirds or negative 5.3 repeating. Okay, let's do a couple more examples and these ones should go more quickly. Uh, number two, a stone dropped into a pond sends out a ripple whose radius increases at a constant rate of three feet per second. How rapidly is the area enclosed by the ripple increasing 10 seconds after the stone has dropped? So I've made a little animation here in Desmos, and as you can see, as the rock drops into the pond, the ripple expands out. And notice that the radius of the ripple is increasing at a constant rate here. That rate was three feet per second. But notice that although the radius is increasing at a constant rate, the area is increasing also, but it's not increasing at a constant rate. Notice, for example, that after one second, Here's how big the ripple would be because it's uh, it would be three feet in radius. After two seconds, it would have a radius of six feet. After three seconds, I'd have to have a radius of nine feet. After four seconds, I would have a radius of 12 feet. Well, notice that between seconds t equals one and t equals two, the amount of area that it's increased by would be the area inside this little annulus right here. But the, between t equals, say, 3 and t equals 4 seconds, the amount of area that it's increasing by is the area of this ring here, this annulus. And notice that annulus has a bigger area than this annulus. So the area obviously is increasing, but it's increasing at an increasing rate. So the big question is after 10 seconds, so now after 10 seconds, I'm going to have to expand out here a little bit. So after 10 seconds, the ripple will have a radius of 30 feet. After 10 seconds, how fast is the area increasing? Okay, how many square feet per second is the area increasing by when the ripple has a radius of 30 feet? So that would be after 10 seconds. So I've drawn a little diagram here of our ripple and notice that the radius is increasing at a rate of three feet per second. And we've defined variables for things that are changing. So notice the radius is R, the radius is getting bigger, that's changing. And also the area is getting bigger, that's changing, right? So th those are two things that we're interested in is air, the area and the radius. And the question is, what is an equation that relates those? Well, the area of a circle is pi r squared. So we've now found an equation that relates our two variables. So the next thing we'll do is we're gonna take a derivative of this equation with respect to time. So we're gonna do d dt of the left side will equal d dt of the right hand side. So what is, what is the derivative of the left-hand side? Well, remember, a is really a of t. It's a function of time. And r is really r of t. It's a function of time. Well, the derivative of a is just going to be dA dt. You could think of it as really 1 times dA dt. Now, what is the derivative of pi r squared? Well, pi, remember, is just a constant. So we can treat pi as if it's just a regular number. So if we wanted to take, for example, the derivative of 5 r squared, well, we bring the 2 out front and we get 10 r to the 1 would be the derivative. So what's the derivative of pi r squared? Well, it would be 2 pi r. But then remember, we also have to multiply by dr dt because r is really a function of time. So we're using the chain rule here or implicit differentiation. So notice, here's our formula after we take the derivative. Now we're going to plug in the things that we know. So what is it that we know? Well, notice in this equation, we have three things that we're interested in, dA dt, r, and dr dt. Well, we know that r is 30 or 30 feet. Why do we know r is 30 feet? Well, the radius is increasing at a rate of three feet per second. And we're talking about 10 seconds after the stone has dropped. So after 10 seconds, if it's going three feet per second, the radius will be 30 or 30 feet. Now we also know dr dt is three. That's the rate of change 
of the radius. How fast is the radius changing? Well, dr dt is going to be 3 feet per second. And last of all, what's dA dt? Well, that's the thing we're interested in. How quickly is the area increasing at that instant, 10 seconds? Well, dA dt, if we plug things in now, dA dt is going to be 2 pi r, but the r is 30, times dr dt, which is 3. So we're basically just taking this equation right here, and we're plugging in the things that we know. And this is what we get. So notice our final answer here. We have 3 times 30 would be 90 times 2 would be 180. So we have 180 pi, which is approximately equal to 565.5, if you get use a calculator. So it's approximately equal to 565.5. Now what would the units here be? This would be square feet per second. Okay, that's how quickly the area is changing after 10 seconds when the radius of the ripple is 30 feet. So this is our final answer. Now again, notice how simple this was. We just found an equation that related our variables, a equals pi r squared. We took the derivative with respect to t and we came up with this equation here. And we plugged in the things that we knew. We knew that the r was gonna be 30 feet. We knew the dr dt was three feet per second. And we just plugged them in and that allowed us to find dA dt, the rate of change of the area. How quickly the area is increasing and we came up with that it's increasing at a rate of 565.5 square feet per second at the instant that the radius is 30 feet that is after 10 seconds all right let's do number three it says a point is moving along the graph of x times y equals 20 when the point is at 10 comma 2, and by the way, I'm not lying here, that point 10 comma 2 really is on the graph. If you plug in 10 for x and 2 for y, you get a true statement here. When the point is at 10 comma 2, its x coordinate is increasing by 4 units per second. How fast is the y coordinate changing at that moment? So I've drawn a graph in Desmos here of x, y equals 20. And notice we have a point here that can be moved along the curve. And I've made a little animation here where I'm going to make the x coordinate of the point increase at a constant rate. But notice the y coordinate is not going to be changing at a constant rate. So notice the x coordinate is increasing at this constant rate, but the y coordinate, well, if we go back and play this again, the y coordinate decreases at a rapid rate at first, but then it kind of slows down a little bit. So the question is if we take this point and if it's as it's moving along the curve, when it goes through the point 10 comma 2, if the x coordinate is increasing at a rate of 4 units per second, how fast is the y coordinate changing? Now, it looks like the y coordinate is going to be decreasing, right? As the x coordinate is increasing here, the y coordinate is going to be decreasing, but how rapidly? So I've drawn a diagram in Desmos. So notice we have our curve x, y equals 20 here in red. We have our point that we're eventually going to want to look at, 10 comma 2 but we've called a generic point along the curve x comma y. And we're thinking of this point as moving along the curve. So the x here is really an x of t and the y is really a y of t. And notice that x represents this distance and y represents this distance. And those distances are changing. So we're thinking of this as like an x of t and we're thinking of this as a y of t. Now again, eventually we're gonna plug in 10 for x and two for y, but for right now we're gonna leave it generic. So the equation that relates our variables is x, y equals 20. And we want to take the derivative of both sides of this equation with respect to t. Now notice, again, the derivative on the right-hand side, the derivative of 20, is just going to be 0. Now what about the derivative of x, y? How do we do this? Well, we're going to have to use the product rule, right? We have a product of two functions. So we're going to do the first function, x, times the derivative of the second one. Well, the derivative of the second one is going to be dy, dt plus the second function y times the derivative of the first one. Well, the derivative of x, remember we're doing a derivative with respect to t, right? So the derivative of x is going to be dx dt. So we have this e new equation down here after taking the derivative. And now what are the things that we know? Well, we have four things in this equation. We have x, dy dt, y, and dx dt. So what of those things do we know? Well, now we can plug in our 10 for x and our two for y. And we also can plug in that the dx dt, the rate of change of x, was 
four units per second. So dx dt is going to be four. So let's plug these things in to this equation. So we'll plug the 10 in for x. We have 10 times dy dt. Well, that's our unknown. How fast is y changing with respect to t? That's what we're trying to find out. Plus y, which is two, times dx dt, which is four, this equals zero. So we have 10 times dy dt plus eight equals zero. Well, let's subtract eight from both sides and put minus eight on the right-hand side. So dy dt is going to be negative eight-tenths or negative four-fifths or negative 0 0.8. Okay, and that will be units per second. Okay, that's how rapidly the y-coordinate is changing at this point 10 comma 2. Now notice it's changing less rapidly than the x-coordinate. We're just like we expected, right? When we're way over here, the x-coordinate is changing still at this rate of four units per second. The y-coordinate is decreasing, so notice that's why we have our negative, but it's decreasing at a little bit of a slower rate at only 0.8 units per second when we're at 10 comma two. Now in the homework, there's a question just like this. In fact, I think they even use the same formula, but you could imagine just using a totally different formula and taking the derivative and you could do this uh, the same way. But I, I think in the homework, they use the exact same formula, x, y equals, and they might use something other than 20 here, but it's the same basic equation. We'll do a few more examples in the next video.